Hi there, uh, we're just doing uh, an additional video here to the to the growling video and just looking a little bit more in depth at some of the um, other little tricks that you can play on your on your sax to achieve that that rock and roll sound. Um, we did a previous video uh, about bends and scoops, lip ups if you want to call them that, uh, which give you this this type of thing. <laughs> just using the lips so if you um, look at that um, that earlier video that we that we made that would explain a little bit about more about bends and scoops fall offs spills would be another thing uh, that we can deal with here which is the the very rapid running down of the fingers um, whilst you drop your jaw out of a note um, accompanied again by a, by a very sort of rapid uh, decrescendo getting very quiet so this this type of thing thing that you're doing with your with your jaw there okay <laughs> I'm just running my fingers down the main body of the instrument and I'm getting quieter as I as I do it very very quickly <laughs> okay uh, another little trick that we use was this um, sort of wider vibrato uh, which can be put together almost like a sort of a shaking type of vibrato um, this this can give you quite a quite a sort of authentic sort of 40s 50s rock and roll honking type of sound <laughs> So that's really just vibrato. But widened out. And added with a bit of a growl. And it gives you quite an effective rock and roll sound there, okay? Um, Another thing which you can get involved with with this uh, with this rock and roll technique is the is the use of false fingering. Uh, some guys call this false tabbing. Um, get yourself uh, a book, say such as the uh, Mark McGee book, uh, Learn to Play Rhythm and Blues Sax. Um, that gives you virtually all of these false fingerings written down. But I mean, just to show you one there, if you're using uh, the A fingering on your saxophone and rather than depressing the G key, leave that open and just using the three notes that are on the on the side here and it's give you this this type of thing. Put a bit of growl in there, use it as a as a as a rhythmic tool, suddenly you've got something which sounds very rock and rolly. If you if you listen to uh, people like sort of Red Price up, those uh, Big J McNeely, those kind of players, Illinois Jacquet, uh, you would hear them sometimes doing notes which are just sorry solos which are just purely based around one note, but using the false tab fingerings, um, which just make them interesting and adding some 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 rhythm in there. So worthwhile getting to know those. There are a few different options for each of the each of the different fingerings. Um, so get yourself. Um, get yourself a book or ask your teacher uh, and no doubt he will he will show you what the best ones are for each particular note uh, but you can actually run through all 12 notes uh, and you can get a false tab fingering for each each note which uh, can can give you some some great options when you're playing blues and rock and roll solos uh, so 
good luck with this. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very interesting way to uh, approach solos. Um, it isn't always um, the only way that you should approach them. If you just want to be a pure rock and roll sax player, that, that's great, but most of us want to play other things as well. So this is, um, you know, use it sparingly. This can be like salt and pepper on your, on your dinner. You know, don't put too much on because it can, it can ruin it. But used in the, in the, in the right places, um, some of these rock and roll techniques can be really fantastic. So good luck with them.